No, I was just curious because you played with George Strain for a long time, yeah. bass and, and so forth. How much, you know, stylistically, when I hear what you do musically, it's, it really comes a lot from Bill Evans in that era, and those that sort of uh, shading chord-wise. How much of an influence did George Shearing, being with him every night? Because, I mean, there's, he's always doing something new. And, and what, what things did you pick up stylistically from him? Oh, gosh. Harmony. More, more most, harmony. Mostly harmony, yeah. Okay. And actually, you know, Bill Evans did too, as a matter of fact. Bill even named right. Shearing as one of his biggest influences. And harmonically, Shearing knew more than anybody. I mean, he could he could play a whole night without ever playing a chord you'd ever heard before if he felt like it. Right. Which he did many times for me. But no, he knew so much about harmony that I, after, I, after I started playing him, I realized that I know next to nothing. And, and I think about probably about three-quarters of what I know about harmony is what I've learned from him. Mm -hmm. And that three-quarters of what I, what I know is probably about one-hundredth of what he knew. Like, he really knew a lot of stuff. Because yeah. he had that, all that classical harmony that he said, like Ravel, W.C., Delius, all that stuff. He could, he could just recreate it at the drop of a hat. And he had written books early on in the 50s and 60s. He had yeah. books out which pretty much reflected Bach and different people and oh, yeah. stylistically. Yeah, I, mean, I have a couple of those books. And they're, I a good, they're a good read, actually. And that was all, a lot of that harmony is in there. But his harmony kept getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. Because even during the time I knew him, like, it changed. I, I played with him from 1982 to the very end. And it was changing all the time. Because there's tunes that he played when I was with him that he'd recorded years before but the chords weren't the same anymore because he found new ways of doing things all the mm -hmm. time and it was it was really interesting Don Thompson my guest in the studio you're a multiple Juno award winner multiple jazz report award winner uh, you won an award from SOCAN original jazz composition and uh, and now an officer of the, or the Order of Canada as of 2010 yeah that and that is a big deal yeah, that, that was really something I don't know how it happened. I have no so idea. Oh, somebody who had this suggestion. Yeah, somebody. They put yeah, your name I, forward. But an officer, I don't know how that ever happens. But anyhow, I mean, it, it's a huge thing. It's a huge honor for me. And I don't take that lightly, that's no. for sure. And what do the awards mean, the Junos and the Jazz Reports and those? Uh, in it's really nice, you know. It's nice to know that somebody notices what you're doing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what it's about. It does, it's not a big career thing. Like, you know, I haven't got a whole lot of work on the car of them, but, like, it's really nice to think that people notice yeah. that I'm doing something. It's not, not like a, what a, a Grammy does. A Grammy puts you in a totally different uh, financial stratosphere, but not, to, not necessarily well, here in Canada, right? Not for the jazz artist. I don't think not for the jazz, jazz artist. I don't think no. so, no. I think it does for a lot of guys, but I think for jazz, it, it's just, it's a, it's a recognition. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody, oh, I did something, and somebody noticed. That's about it, I think. Over the years that you've been performing and recording, what, is, what has been the most special thing to happen to you? I mean, other than, than the, the Order of Canada, professionally speaking, like what are those, some of those, um, those watershed moments in, in your life and those things that happen, whether being approached by a, uh, a musician that, that you have so much respect for and have him or her say to you, I think you're terrific. Those kinds of moments. I don't know about moments. There's it's people with me. It's not moments, but there are people that have made a huge impact on my life. Mm -hmm. I think starting with John Handy and Sonny Greenwich is another one. Uh, Paul Desmond. Paul for sure. George with, Shearing with Jay Brubex. George Shearing and Jim Hall. There's another two more incredibly important people. And recently, uh, Phil Dwyer has been a huge presence in my life. And Diane Patton. Diana Patton is a yeah. huge presence in my life. Reg Schwager. You know, people, and that's people more than anything. that We had Reg on the show. And you've had Diana, too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. that, that's, uh, people are important to me. I don't think about anything very much else. But those people really do mean a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And there's others, too, obviously. There's other people. They're, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Jim Hall, I can't imagine what it would have been like not to have known Jim Hall, for instance. Younger musicians, do they approach you and ask you for words of wisdom and, and guidance? And have you guided younger people? Have you mentored? Not officially, but I've had no, no. a lot of young people that have been my students. And they, they seem to feel like they get something out of it, I think. You know, who's one big one was Diana Crow. 
Diana, yeah, yeah. Diana Cole when she was very young. Yeah, she came to Toronto for a while, and she's she was really lovely and really nice. And we spent some time together working on the piano and everything. Well, you did, I don't know. I don't you know did a good job. <laughs> I don't know if I taught her anything about the piano, but she seemed to think it was. You know, she seemed to think she got something out of it, so that makes me happy. Well, well she, sure she, did. she said later on, she said she wished she could go back now, because at the time she said I was just so confused and there was so much going on. She said, I wish I could go back and take more lessons with Don. Yeah, uh, well, those yeah. are those are the kinds of uh, regrets that you have because because you, you sometimes you look back at part of your life and you think, wow, that was amazing. Why didn't that last longer? Right. Well, I'll tell you what my regret is. I worked for George, with George Shearing for five years as a duo. I spent countless hours in his apartment with him. I stayed with him over, you know, I stayed in his apartment night after night for, you know, for five years, and we traveled all over the world together, and I never had the brains to ask him for a music lesson. Really? In all that time, I never asked him, George, could you show me what you're doing there? I never had the brains to ask him for a lesson. I just took it for granted. I'm playing with this cat, and I'm listening to him every night. I'll figure it out. You well, know, you, you were probably learning at the same time, though. I learned, yeah, but I learned about a tenth of what I would have learned yeah. if I'd actually taken a couple of good lessons from him. Well, I think you've done fairly well, Don. Well, I, I, picked, <laughs> I, I picked up some stuff, and I figured yeah. some stuff out anyhow. But, like, yeah. but that, you know, that's my regret anyhow, that I didn't ask him some I asked, questions. I asked him one time, I heard him in 1963, my dad took us to hear him in concert, right? And before the curtain went up, he was playing piano in the background. It was, And I remember the song, I'll Be Around. Okay, and I asked him, you know, I said, God, I remember you playing at the Brown Hotel behind the curtain, and it was extraordinary. I'll be around. And I said, it was in such a beautiful key, and he goes, yeah, F sharp. That's right. And I went, <laughs> you remember the key? <laughs> he, he never forgot anything. No. no. And he, every time he played, and this is, this, was a, this is one lesson I did get from him, every time he played the piano, and there, I would, you know, for example, we'd be sitting having breakfast in his apartment. And he's not dressed, he's just got a big house coat on and everything. <coughs> so we're sitting there having breakfast. And I'd mention to him, George, have you ever played Haunted Heart? Because this is the tune we hadn't done. And he'd get out, he'd put his coffee down and walk through the apartment and sit down at the piano and play Haunted Heart. And it would be like a recording session. It would be absolute perfection, and I'd say, oh, man, I wish I'd have recorded that. Yeah. <laughs> and he never played, that's the way he always played. Don, he, he played like that all the time. Everything he played was like a tape. Yeah. Don Thompson will be at the Jazz Bistro along with uh, Neil Swainson. It's their uh, CD release, their latest CD called Tranquility. They'll be at the Jazz Bistro Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, each night starting at 9 p.m. Thanks very much for coming in. It's a real pleasure meeting you. Well, thanks for having me. It's it is wonderful. And the best on the record, too. You took oh, yeah. It's a beautiful record. Oh, thank yeah. you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Coming up, uh, Michael Coran and a new book he has written called The Future of Catholicism. It's 201 at News Talk 1010.